Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Jan's Opening Clinic. The show where I answer Chess24 Premium users, Chess Opening questions, as well as I can. Let's jump straight into the action and see what kind of questions we got today. We will start with our old friend Spec Cook. How do you translate Spec Cook? That's Bacon chef? Fat chef? I'm not sure how you translate spec. Um, anyway, spec cook is saying, Hi Jan, as someone with a full-time job. Wow, brag. It seems reasonable to not study tons of variations of the Sicilian and just find one variation that works. <clears throat> yeah. I therefore play a lot of e4, c5, 2, knight f3 and then the immediate g6 with black, which takes away the Rosolimo as one of white's options. What I don't get though is why no one else seems to play 2g6 immediately. White can argue that there is the extra option of queen takes d4, e4, c5, knight f3, g6, d4, cd, queen d4, but I don't see any particular problems for black in the position arising after knight f6, e5, knight c6. In fact, I often get positions where it's possible to play d5 in one move, as opposed to the normal dragon where black plays d6 and later d5 anyway. So as of right now, I actually don't have an opening issue, but I'm just wondering if there's a strong continuation for white after 2g6 that no one seems to play. It would help me feel prepared a bit more. Thanks and greetings from Leiden, the Netherlands. I've been to Leiden many a time, beautiful place. As for the line from Leiden, I don't think there is one big issue with it, but there are many small issues. It's one of those lines that I also end up considering if I'm looking for like a surprise weapon for my next Bundesliga port 8 game with black before I end up playing some boring e4, e5 anyway. The thing is that white has many options that are quite decent. Maybe let's start with one point you mentioned. You mentioned there is the bonus option of d4, cd, queen d4. And after knight f6, I haven't been to this territory for a while, but I didn't think e5 was so critical. I thought the critical line was something like knight c3, knight c6, queen a4. You're d6, they go e5, and I guess the best is d e95, and now either bishop g7 or bishop d7, but it was somewhat a, of a struggle for black to equalize, because white gets the two bishops and ends up being a little bit better, I thought. However, this I think could be fixed, so it's not a reason that not to play that opening just pointing out there are some more options in there then the thing is in this position that white has off the top of my head at least three pretty good choices where i think it won't be easy to equalize one is c3 one is bishop c4 that's very rare but not so bad and then there is c4 or d4 followed by c4 like because you could go let's say this this and now c4 I believe at the highest level, this is probably the biggest turn of people just do, do not enjoy to play the Marozzi with black. I think it's still a playable opening, and especially if you're not playing two 750s all the time, then it does make some sense or more sense going for these positions because black's play is not that hard. Knight c6, d6, knight f6, castles. Take on d4, go bishop d7, bishop c6, a5, knight d7, and have a look around in many of the main lines. I have no idea if this is your intention at all, but there are some schemes one can stick to that make the Morozzi kind of bearable. But I do believe there are objective problems, and I always like the structure for, for white. So I believe that is one thing to keep in mind, at least. Of course, if you just want to use this mover to transpose it to the pure dragon, you can start with knight f6 here which is a trick I think I've actually used. Point being that e5, queen, a5 check is not great, so white is nothing better than knight c3, and you can go d6. And here you avoided the Morozzi. Then you could argue that if they start with c4 here after bishop g7, d4, I don't know, maybe you have some tricky move you want to play, like d6 or queen a5 check or queen b6. I don't think any of these moves are particularly great, but there are some sidelines that one can dabble in here. So yeah, it would break our format a bit to give too big of a Marozzi lecture, but I do believe that that's 
one big reason why it's not more common at the higher levels. And if you start with knight c6, then you allow the Rosolimo, but you will usually not get any c4, d4, because here black has not committed to g6 yet and has many other options. For example, after c4, even e5 is a good move, d6, g6, bishop g7, followed by f5. And after d4, c, d, knight, d4, most people don't play g6, but play knight f6 here once again, not giving white time to go c4. All right, back to 2, g6. Another move I think is becoming more and more topical is the c3 move. When black has a choice, you can go bishop g7, white goes d4, you take, go d5. Now white has a choice between ed and e5, I think e5 is critical. And these positions, if you feed them to powerful computers, they actually quite like white here. <clears throat> Some knight c6, they often like bishop b5 and try to put pressure here. It's not so easy to play. The bishop on g7 is a little funny. That's why many people prefer starting with d5 after c3. And once again, white is a choice. You can take, followed by d4, transposing to some Alap in Sicilian, which I think is playable for black, but black needs to know stuff there. And white can still try to go e5 even here. And black can try to do without bishop g7, playing like knight c6, d4, c, d, c, d, bishop to g4. But even this position, bishop b5, I don't think it's that simple for black to equalize. So c3 is there. And one option that's not played that often, but that I think also makes a fair bit of sense, is the move bishop to c4 here. Looks sort of random. But the point is we're waiting for <coughs> black to commit to bishop g7, and I would assume knight c6. Now we play c3. There is no longer any d5 slooming. Next move we want to play d4. And even here, it's not straightforward to me at least how black equalizes. e6, d4 is not that easy. D5 takes takes bishop b5 something along these lines or rookie one check first. Not that simple and d6. White goes d4 and once again I'm not so sure how black is supposed to do this. None of these lines are winning, but you did ask why 2g6 was not more popular. And I think it's the accumulation of all these things. So you have to be ready for the Marozzi, you have to be ready for c3, you have to be ready for d4, c d, queen d4. And you have to be ready for bishop c4. All of those giving white a very good chance for an opening advantage is kind of too much to swallow for most players. And then there is also the reasoning that if they just go for the line you're hoping for, which I guess is this, and now the argument will be that you can, as you wrote, play d5 in one go, that I do not think... Um, after bishop c4, short castles, bishop b3. The lines where black does without d6 are that tempting either. Like this position you see every now and then. <clears throat> More often than not, it's reached via, I think, knight c6, d4, cd, knight d4, g6. And now white decides not to play c4, but to play knight c3. But <clears throat> the options that... The extra options that black has here, if white isn't, knows what he's doing, like bishop c4, never tempted me that much. Sometimes I play, play queen a5 <clears throat> to force short castles, which once again, playable, but the queen on a5 is a bit silly, so it's not the greatest of lines. Sometimes they go for castles, white goes bishop b3. Now we play d6, you transpose back to the dragon after f3, so you haven't achieved d5 in one go. There are different lines here. A5 is a move. Rook E8 is sort of a waiting move that's becoming a bit more popular, intending to meet F3 with D5. But even these lines, it's basically forced attempts trying to equalize some somewhat worse positions after E D knight B4, knight D2. So long story short, you give white a lot of options, and the upside if white plays the line that you want them to play, which is this one is also not very clear. Therefore, this move order with 2g6 is not that popular. Still, I think it's, yeah, to me, a decent surprise weapon and you can throw it out every now and then. But since white has that giant choice, it's gonna be, to my mind, yeah, a tougher territory to defend than if you chose a mainline with knight c6, the Sveshnikov, the Rouser, whatever it is. <clears throat> 
So, sorry, I didn't mean to rain on your 2G6 parade. And if you're happy with it, by all means, keep playing it. But you asked what I thought was wrong with it. And I answered. Thanks for the question, Mr. Speckcook. Let's move on. Whoa, a Grandmaster of War 1996. No idea who that is. But thanks, Mr. Of War, for joining our little show. Saying, hi, Jan. QG Catalan is a trendy line now. What's QG Catalan? Oh, you mean, ah, yeah, got it. The combination of Catalan with 6 knight c3, Sir so Castle, and DC 95, knight c6, bishop c6, bc. By the way, I should not pretend, I don't mean to pretend that I haven't seen these questions before. I actually do prepare for answering these questions. So I'm just trying to um, restore in my mind what this line was that I looked at. It's not like I'm seeing this question for the first time. So knight c3, dc, knight c5, knight c6, bishop c6, bc, knight c6, queen e8, knight e7, queen e7, queen a4, c5, dc, queen c5, bishop e3, bishop c7. Why is a choice? It looks like after Castles or rook d1, black can play knight d5 with equality. White can play long castles, Karana Nakamura, but after knight g4, rook d2, knight e3, fe queen c5, e4, rook d8, rook b8, rook hd1, stockfish shows h6 with 0, 0. However, white can try f3, knight d5, bishop d4, with the idea to play long castles. For example, rook d8, long castles, or a5, long castles. Is this idea dangerous for black? Honestly... I never liked these lines that much for black, as obviously you will have done as well. If you check with the computer, it's not like there are any giant <clears throat> numbers popping up on your screen. But I was always a bit worried about playing these types of positions. To make clear what we're talking about, we're talking about the Catalan main line and in this position itself castles white plays the move knight to c3 which i think i've dabbled with as well and i've certainly told people to try this so dc 95 black has some short, sharper options here queen d6 is a move and c5 is not really sharper but is probably with perfect play the even though knight c6 should also equalize with perfect play so i'm not sure this is true but this should equalize if black knows what he's doing However, it's why to get Steph slightly more fun because of his long bishop. But every time I check this for white, I don't get anywhere either. So I do think this equalizes. But let's get to off wars question, which was his move knight c6. Looks shocking the first time you see it, but it's well established. And the Catalan, both after castles and after knight c3, takes, takes, knight c6, queen a8, takes, takes, queen a4, c5, and pawn takes. All of this is pretty well known queen c4 cd queen d4 e5 nothing special takes takes bishop e3 now black sort of has a choice of where to go but yeah i agree queen c7 is the best move and here is where the debates start basically i agree with what you said you said long castles knight g4 and the computer gives equality how was this line takes rook queen c5 e4 rook b8 rook hd1 h6 with equality there was one more detail here i think queen a3 looks like a funny move and if black takes on a3 white is actually much better after ba in spite of his pawn structure so after queen a3 black has to find rook b4 which to my mind it wasn't that simple a move but it is easy so yeah computer wise this doesn't seem much i've never been too sure about all this family of positions like you can reach them with different movers here white can't take because i don't know how does this go bad things will happen to him yeah queen b7 <clears throat> but all these positions with f3 bishop d4 i don't really think white should be much better but i'm always a bit worried about ending up in one of those and what do you say you said starting with f3 knight d5 now you want to go bishop d4 right it's sort of similar i I think a5 was the move, no? <clears throat> and I, computer-wise I can never really get anywhere with white, but I do understand that it's mildly worrying. So like, over the board, I'm not sure if white really has a plan to break through in any of these positions. 
because compies just say this is perfectly fine or here even that it's better for black but i'm always slightly slightly concerned which might be lack of understanding on my part like computer wise i can't really find anything here like long castles f6 for example takes takes and my computer says yeah good luck to you sir so it's hard to say i believe that if black spent some time here he clearly should hold these positions and they're not that scary Karana had this one nice try with long castles but now we've seen it and i don't think he's bound to repeat and here after bishop d4 a5 once again looks like black is holding but i sort of yeah understand and i've always been somewhat worried about these positions like here even short castles i'm i will get zeros on my screen but i'm not sure how much i enjoy them so with black i probably would be quite tempted actually depending obviously who you play and what we're playing for what kind of result to go for c5 in an equalizing sense i don't think i'm adding much to your question i think yeah i kind of agree except with your suggestion that this 14 f3 knight d5 bishop d4 um how was it a5 long castles could be dangerous for black there i didn't see any particular danger in that that position like a5 long castles f6 let's say which yeah looks like black is okay to me but i do feel somewhat wary very about going for these positions with black i think i gave those as the main line in one of these video series i did on chess 24 for black claiming quality which is there but i've always had this somewhat funky feeling about those that's why i'm a bit undecided between c5 and c6 so yeah sorry i don't have that much to contribute it's a computer-wise fine area for black but i don't like the position that much Vector ploy is saying, Hi Jan, is the Alekine's defense? I never know how to pronounce this. In English shows I say Alekine. In German we say Ayechin. I think Swidler taught me it's closer to Ayochin. Anyway, is the Alekine's defense really as fun and attacking as it's often described? Or is it just unsound? Thanks. The Alekine's defense is 1e4 knight to f6 and i'm very curious who these people are that often describe the alekines as fun and attacking did you fall for some clever marketing there don't want to name names but i'm sure there are books out there play the killer alekine fun attacking dynamic the thing is i've played like 8,000 games with e4 knight of six because I always pre-move knight f6 in bullet, which is not a smart thing to do, since your clock usually only starts running after you made your first move. But I can't help myself. So I have a lot of experience with the position after e4, knight f6, e5, knight d5, d4, d6. And I have a pretty big sample size. And according to my sample size, 100% of the internet in this position, instead of knight f3, which used to be considered the main line, but 100% of the internet plays c4, Knight b6, e takes d6. And white is just slightly better, and there is very little fun to be had. Therefore, I it has come to a point where I almost considered to stop pre-moving um, one knight f6, because I'm not sure I have another 8,000 games in this position in me. It's just tough to play. Cd, knight c3, you just don't equalize. There are many. Good setups for white here after g6, h3, followed by knight f3 is good. I think the main line is bishop e3, bishop g7, rook c1, castles b3. When after knight c6, they go d5, and after e5, they take, take, take here. What do they do? They play c5, some move, knight d7, bishop c4. And it's a somewhat thankless endgame for black. So cd is not great according to my vast experience. Therefore, I usually play ED, but I usually struggle to equalize here too. And white has a just somewhat more space. This knight is somewhat misplaced, somewhat better pieces. And <clears throat> I somewhat feel I should stop saying somewhat. But it's not really 
anybody's idea of fun and attacking hereafter. This position white has a ton of options. H3, once again, followed by knight f3. Knight g2 is what they usually play against me. And I never really equalize. So, <clears throat> I don't know. The problem is, as I mentioned, that since you will get this position pretty much every game, all these fun lines from your book. I've never read an Elekheim, uh, Elekheim's book, so I, it's just a fictional book. I'm not firing any shots at Elekheim book authors. I don't know any of the books out there. But I do know that all these fun lines, like here, I want to play this, which I think is bad too. But it looks funny, and I always hope for d6, queen, a4, h4 check. So all these fun lines that you want to get in. I think white is supposed to play this when I want this. And here I hope for bishop takes c4, queen, h4. Once again, I don't think it really works. But at least, you know, it's fun and attacking. But I never get it. I think objectively you're supposed to play bishop f5 here, followed by e6, knight c6. And the game continues. But as mentioned, no one ever plays this. And they also do not play knight f3. When black at least has a choice. Like, I don't think there's any particular fun and attacking option here. But at least there are options. d e c6, d e g6, bishop g4. Bishop f5. What do I know? g6. Probably not g6. Um, but once again, I do have vast experience. And this is what everybody plays. And you're not going to enjoy it all that much. <clears throat> Here, once again. White can choose many setups. Knight f3 is fine. Bishop d3. Knight g2 is fine. White is just slightly better without any real downside if you compare it to whatever the berlin the position looks to me at least a bit like one of those where black conceded the center which normally i don't know i'm making up moves here but normally black doesn't do here and you do not gain all that much upside. So that's the problem with the Alkine, and as mentioned, I might have to stop one out of six as a pre-move, because in my experience, it has not been that much fun, and also not that much attacking, because this knight is on b6, it's pretty far away from this king that will be on g1, so it's not like we have an army of attackers surrounding that guy. in any of these positions if you know what i mean he's pretty safe here so while i play the alkyne a lot i really don't like it thanks for your question factor ploy gaviakula is asking and i have a feeling did I overlook that question? I have a feeling I overlooked it, but I think I can answer it anyway. So apologies in advance for not preparing for your question, Gavia Kula. But I'll wing this one. No one will notice. I'm not prepared. He's saying, Hi Jan, you yourself advocated playing c5 followed by b5 against the 4 f3 Nemzo. Yep. What would be a good choice against the same -ish move order? 4 a3, bishop c3, b c, c5, f3. And if we play d5, White can go d takes c5 again. Would 6d6 be most in the spirit of the aforementioned line? Yeah, you don't want d5 there. That's the main point why people don't play the same ish on a regular basis. So d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, bishop to b4, the Nimzo. And what Gavia Kula mentioned was f3, c5, d5, and I think. Did I give? Okay, I guess it transposes. In my video series, I gave castles e4, b5, which is, yeah, one of the, if not the main line for black, leads to a very sharp mess in these things. But as far as I know, black is doing pretty okay here. Therefore, Gavia Kula is saying, why can't we start with a3? More or less forcing black to take b takes c. Now we play c5, and after f3, we hope for d5 trying to transpose back. His point is, 
After f3, if they go d5, white plays a3, takes, takes, c5, c takes d5. And this is a main line that, for example, the line I was giving is avoiding, well, going for a different territory. So, yeah, I think you also gave the point yourself here after f3. d5 is far from forced and black should play one of the more typical schemes here which is either b6 or d6 since i did not prepare for your question because i am an idiot <clears throat> i am not quite sure what my answer was in my video series i'm sure i gave an answer about this as well my best guess would be that it's d6 e4 knight c6 here fighting against pawn to e5 and then we can proceed with castles and the typical plan of b6, bishop a6, knight to a5. Going after Mr. Mr. c4 pawn, which is the glaring weakness in this position. It's always a bit of a decision for black here if he wants to play b6 early, but then you have to deal with e4 and e5 becoming a bit of a threat already. So, well, this these positions are not terrible. I think we want to avoid that and we want to start with d6 e4 knight to c6 now i feel embarrassed that i do not know the theory of the top of my head here but i am fairly certain that the point is not to play d5 transposing back to a line of the 4 f3 nims aware the black is okay but at least white can fight for an advantage here in all these things but instead say okay sir are you sure you want to live with this pawn on the c4 square, which I will eventually come after. There were some recent Grandmaster games too. I think Carlson gave it a shot against Aronia and did not enjoy himself all that much. So I believe the common thinking is still that this pawn is too big a weakness and the white initiative will not fully compensate for it. But yeah, it's an important point, Gaviakula. And thanks for bringing that up, that we can't be mover out there because I do enjoy a bit of move ordering here and there. <clears throat> Fravatel is saying, Hi Jan, in his fine series, playing 1e4, Grandmaster John Shaw recommends 6 queen f3 in the line e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd, I guess he means ed, knight d4, bishop c5, knight c6, queen f6, queen f3. I have some experience in practice with this line and I tend to think it does not really give white much to play for. Maybe I don't I just don't grasp the fine nuances of the system yet. What would be your recommendation for white against four bishop c5? Should we go six queen f3 anyway, or rather for something like the line Kasparov played in Blitz against Nakamura 2016, the old main line with five bishop e3 and instead of Knight e5, 8, bishop e2, go bishop c4. I think he means instead of bishop e2, go bishop b3. Anyway, I'll put it on the board. Thanks in advance and keep up the good work. Thank you, Fravatel. The good old Scotch opening. So, mainly, but of course I'll get into it anyway. I'm a knight f6 guy, so I haven't been into big details after bishop to c5 for a while, because I think black is doing great in all these lines, and I never really saw a reason to stray away from them, because they, yeah, I just think black is an excellent shape there. So bishop c5, I used to play like 15 years ago, but I haven't really stayed in touch with because as you kind of hint at it gives white a bit of a choice this knight c6 queen f6 queen f3 well one great thing about this is that white is certainly not worse he's maybe even somewhat better which is or if anybody's better it's white let's put it that way which is a rare occurrence in the scotch i would argue um i can't claim a lot of expertise but it's not that simple here no like D takes c6, they used to play, but then there is this knight c3, knight c bishop e6, bishop e3. So exchanging everything 
always leaves white somewhat better because of his extra tight central control. And if I, let's play a drinking game. If I keep saying somewhat in this episode, you drink a shot. Um, so bishop to b4 here is what they do. But then long castles looks a bit scary. Takes, takes, queen c3, bishop d4. Takes, takes. And I like white's chances in this endgame. So there are there is some trickery here. And I think people started going b takes c, knight c3, d6, playing these types of positions, which I guess black can equalize. But from black's point of view, might depend on your style, but I never found those all that appealing either. Therefore, I was never all that tempted to go here with black, but I can also understand if you want action and offbeat positions. These are fairly technical after queen f3, that they might not be your cup of tea. You mentioned this line with bishop e3, queen f6, c3, knight g e7, bishop c4, knight e5. I think that's what he meant. And bishop b3 here. The old main line is bishop e2. Which, by the way, is this that simple? Bishop e2, what I used to play in, in my day was something like this. And now I would feel smart about this delayed d5. I think my computer was saying something like king h1 takes takes bishop b6, a4. Okay, I'm not gonna claim white is winning exactly, but this might be as good a hunting ground as any for a tiny, tiny advantage. So I'm not sure how dead this bishop e2 move is. Bishop b3 was this Kasparov's surprise weapon. And black has to find some strange moves. But if he does, then... Okay, it's not like white is winning after this bishop b3. There, there are more pieces on the board. So it can lead to somewhat different play. I think these type of lines, if you're confident, you can outsmart, outprepare people here. Maybe catch them off guard. Maybe there is somewhat more upside. Somewhat. Hmm. <clears throat> than in the knight c6, queen f3 thing. But objectively, I do not really believe in a white advantage either. Disclaimer, not a giant expert. One line you didn't mention, that is, I think, enough reason for me not to play bishop c5 in the first place. Also knight b3, which I never really liked, just structurally speaking. There you go, bishop b6, knight c3, Knight f6, usually some queen e2, followed by bishop g5 in long castles. I was never a big fan of these positions for black. Obviously, they have a body of theory, and I'm sure it's well analyzed, but I thought stuff is playable here for white. I'm just showing a random line, just a simple line. Still, and this central configuration does favor him. So, I do believe there is quite some scope for analysis and outplaying opponents here as well. Long story short, I believe objectively, like in a computer plus showing kind of way, this is probably your best bet in white. Might get a small plus, but in a let's keep more pieces on the board, I do play the scotch because I'm an adventurer and I want a board full of pieces. I would go knight b3 or Maybe as second choice, one of the lines we discussed here with bishop e2 or bishop b3. However, once again, pretty good move, knight f6. So that I'm not much of an e4 player, but I think this would be enough of a turn up for me not to touch the Scotch that much, unless you want to transpose to the Scottish four knights here. All right, those are my thoughts on that. Matter, thanks for your question. Fravatel. Who is next? We have Mr. Truscus. He's saying, beloved Dr. Jan. That is the correct way to address me. Thank you, Truscus. Feed master. He is saying, doubts are corroding my soul. Been there. Still in there. After d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, a6, 5, e3, both bishop f5 and b5 deserve a place in my heart. 
What is your diagnosis? Is there any remedy for my misfortune? And most importantly, which do you think will annoy white players the most? I'll be looking forward. To your verdict, sir. Sorry. Um, good old Slav. Hmm. Let's put the Slav on the board. Let's wipe it clear of this scotch. D4, D5, C4, C6. Knight C3. Knight f6, knight f3, a6. The, what's it called, Trebonenko, is that still popular? I don't know. I never liked c5 or cd5 from black's perspective, but with white, through move order trickery, I've played a lot of e3 here as well, usually. Something like this happens, and after a6, I was happy to transpose back to these knight f3 positions. And you are saying both b5 and bishop f5 deserve in a deserve a place in your heart if that is the case first of all do you have to be monogamous here do you have to commit to b5 or to bishop f5 and just you know never screw around with the other one i'm not sure maybe you can have both of them why not why not add e6 to your list of moves as well go crazy it's what anon played in a world championship match having said all that if I don't reach this position very often with black. I do not trust the position after b5, b3 very much. Just, you know, on, I don't know, general grounds, weaknesses here. And I also don't know how to equalize. So I have less love for this one, even though I'm sure there is plenty scope for freestyling here. You can play any move, but the main lines like bishop g4 i think a4 might be a good move here like b4 knight e2 and the black queen side looks a bit funny and queen c2 is fairly regular move as well when i think it's been established that black should avoid this type of structure because he just has no play and is in risk of getting slowly slowly worn down maybe in a thousand years why we'll be ready to sacrifice a piece on b5 or to triple on the a file so yeah black should probably not go here and after queen c2 what do they do they play like e6 right you get these types of positions where i don't know black might survive but it never struck me as a fun activity why does know what he's doing here? Knight bd7, short castles, but it can get pretty risky for black. And I never liked it that much. So if I had to choose, I would probably choose against b5 and go for bishop f5. Bishop f5 is practically a bit of the drawback that white can play bishop d3, which can be somewhat dull here. I don't know, if you go bishop e7, white can play with e4. If you go bishop b4, you probably have to give up this bishop on c3. So it's not exactly winning, but it can be a little, you know, unexciting. But that's not a refutation. White does have quite a few sharper choices here. Like queen b3. When I think I played b5 in the old days. Nowadays I play rook a7 more often. Just, you know, defending this guy and saying, haha, your queen on b3 is as misplaced as my rook on a7. And yeah, there are all kinds of lines here. What against me, they somehow play knight h4 very often, which I don't think is a critical move, but somehow I keep running into that one. Bishop g4, queen b3, b5. I think I had more than one game with. Mm. Knight e5 is also a line. I think this was fairly sharp. Knight bd7, queen b3. And queen c7, right? with complex play so long story short bishop f5 you have to be ready for quite some direct attempts especially i think knight e5 and queen b3 where you better make sure that you make it out of the opening alive but if you can then i do like bishop f5 
better than B5 because to my mind, once again, this is to my mind, um, it feels sounder than playing B5. When C5 is also a move, like when positionally, I don't really understand what's going on. I was always more of a of a B3 guy and after Bishop G4, you pick your poison like Bishop E2, Bishop D2, I've messed around with Queen D2, Queen C2, A4, all the moves strike me as interesting for white here. And I just never liked this black construction that much. Not saying it's losing or anything, but not a fan. So if I were you, I would go bishop f5 and then, you know, keep b5 in your promiscuous back pocket to surprise guys or girls once in a while. That is my advice. And e6 exists soon. Thanks for your question, Mr. Truskus. Truskus. What time is it? All right, we can do two more. Jeff Tennant, not a premium member. Sorry, Jeff cannot answer your question. Eduardo Zaidan is saying, Hi, Jan, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm glad to hear that, Eduardo. Um, he says, I have this issue. I hate to lose much more than I like to win. Do you also have that issue? I very much have that. I think it's a fairly common problem, um, not just in chess, but in a lot of sports, if we're just for this exercise, assume chess is a sport. The problem is, in other sports, usually you don't have a draw, so there's no way out. You can hate losing more than you like winning, because let's face it, we all think we are smarter, stronger, better, faster, and the other guys so if we win it's normal well if we lose it's it's crushing and the feeling of satisfaction you get from a result you consider sort of natural towards the despair compared to the despair of losing it's just yeah it's a tough equity but if you play whatever basketball or tennis there's it won't really affect your style very much while in chess you have this excuse of a draw and if you like Mm. winning less than you hate losing, then you will probably become a drawmeister like me, trying to prevent that pain. But, of course, that in the long run will lead to you not improving because you don't play out your games. It will lead you down the dark, dark tunnel of being called a chicken just because you can't feel any joy. And that will lead to much more self-loathing. So... Enjoy, Eduardo Zaidan. And now let's get to the opening question. Um, he's saying, anyway, in e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. I guess he means knight c6. And bishop b5, a6, bishop c6, dc, d4, ed, queen d4, queen d4, knight d4, bishop d7, bishop e3, long castles, nine knight c3, f6. Why f6? That looks like a bad move. I know I'm supposed to be equal with black, but I always feel like I'm fighting to survive. Do you have any suggestions? I'm sure you have already answered that before, but what is the most solid line against the exchange variation of the Spanish? Remember, I don't mind drawing. I do remember. Um, thanks, Eduardo Zaidan. The line you're giving looks pretty bad for white, so I'm not quite sure what you're worried about there, or if you mixed up the mover a little bit. Because after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, takes, takes. I think you start, we're starting with d4 here, which qualified players usually don't do. They used to do this in the old days, but it makes Black's life a little too easy to give him this endgame. Where bishop d7 is correct, followed by long castles. And after knight c3, you said f6, but there's absolutely no reason for Black to go f6 here. <clears throat> what you generally want to do is put this knight on g6. Sometimes you can use it to help with f5 too, but it tends to be a good idea to get it out of the way. Here you could play f5, so I'm not sure. Maybe I'm already regretting my words, because here f5 looks pretty good. Put the knight on e7, then put it on g6, or play f5. Mm. But even if you, let's say, put it here, then grab more space on the queen side. It's going to be very, very hard for white to do anything. Because in order to do something, white would have to push this point, like just in general, not on this position. But then after f6, he's created a weakness on e4 for himself, while his poor majority 
is not really gonna go anywhere with that many pieces on the board against your two bishops. So generally, white does not go for these positions and there is no reason for black to play f6. I could imagine, I could be wrong, but I could imagine that the line you had in mind was something like castles f6, d4, e takes d4. And once again, the main move is knight takes d4, but now queen takes d4, where you're already committed to f6. Queen d4, knight d4, bishop d7. And here, this is still supposed to be perfectly fine for black, but here it's a bit more of a debate, I would say. And yeah, the question usually that black players face when preparing for the exchange Spanish is, how do I want to react to short castles? When I stop playing f6 at some point, because these end games, well, it's hard to say white is better, but it felt like white was getting some chances here, which I didn't feel he deserved. So I've dabbled in different systems here. I quite like queen to f6. I quite like bishop to d6. And queen f6, the thing is, it leads to a similar end game. And at first sight, it might even look worse than the ones we talked about. But once again here, queen takes d4 is supposed to be nothing, and after knight takes d4, bishop e7. Even with one bishop, black is supposed to be pretty all right here. So I guess if you're afraid of the other end game, that move is not for you. Um, bishop d6 is very, very solid. d4, e, d, queen d4, f6. That's a pretty safe system. Bishop g4, h3, h5 also every time I check is holding for black. But it requires some work. So yeah, maybe I would look into bishop d6 if I was you, not into f6. As for the psychological problem, yeah, I have that too. What can we do? Mm, I don't know. Just prepare more so we never lose. That's been my, my approach. I'm not sure. It's a very healthy one. Thanks for your question, Mr. Eduardo Zaidan. All right, let's do one more question and then wrap this up. Turf and Fragment is saying, I used to play the semi as black, but lost a bit of enthusiasm for it. Enthusiasm was curbed after d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, c6, e3, knight bd7, bishop d3. Dc bishop c4 b5 bishop d3 bishop b7 short castles the weight variation appeared a bit too often what can I do on move nine or earlier to keep things a bit more lively and less positional looking am I missing some nuances that make this more interesting than it looks that's the position you think is boring that surprises me turf and fragment that's not that boring position isn't is it usually. The Marin main lines. <clears throat> People were <clears throat> not considering a particularly dull area. Let's put it on the board, sorry. Um, so Semislav, many ways to get here. Say this, e3, knight bd7, bishop d3, dc, bishop c4, b5, bishop d3, bishop b7. First of all, if you're worried about dullness, you can play this move a6 here, which brought Vichy Anand two big victories in his World Championship match against Kramnik. And after e4, c5, the board was on fire in both cases very quickly. After e5, cd, knight b4. Knight b5, and here black has a choice. Knight g4, interesting. Knight e5, interesting. A b5, Anand's choice, interesting. Not particularly dull. Well, a d5, bishop b7, I don't think is very dull either. So I'm mainly surprised because after bishop b7 here, you're saying castles is a line you find boring. A3 is somewhat more positional in my mind. But castles gives black the chance to play a6. Or the chance is a big word. You could play bishop d6 here. It's a very respectable system too. But here, if black plays a6, he wants to go c5 next. When, if white plays something dull, whatever, let's say b3, he goes c5. These positions, black can very quickly, easily be better. The main reason is this knight on c3 is misplaced now. It's blocking the view of a bishop on b2. 
it can one day be kicked by pawn to b4 and it's really just clumsily placed it wants to be on d2 where our black knight already is on d7 so these positions black can very very easily overtake the initiative and i would never be worried about them so after a6 really the only serious move for white to play is e4 now black plays c5 fighting back in the center before white gets an e5 in this position e5 is not considered to be very good after cd knight b5 for example bishop f3 is queen f3 knight d5 i once lost this because i'm an idiot but it's a very easy at least equalizer i think black is somewhat better so e5 is not really a move and d5 is the main move leading to some of the sharpest positions that chess theory has to offer really like black has quite some options here queen c7 c4 bishop d6 all these moves are playable but let's say queen c7 just to choose one trendy line here after d e f e the main move is bishop c2 just anticipating potential c4 black goes bishop d6 in many lines black will castle queenside and really does this look dull to you this is a mess theory continues just you know for funsies with knight g5 knight f8 pawn to f4 now black chooses between h6 and long castle for example long castle queen e2 h6 knight f3 bishop f4 bishop f4 queen f4 pawn to e5 pawn to g3 pawn to a4 rook a1 all of this is a mess so is knight to h3 pawn to e5 which i think is fine for black and f4 h6 e5 also exists mm -hmm. long castles with once again more fire on board therefore yeah i'm surprised that's the line that turned you off as too boring had you said i just can't handle seeing another one of these b3 short castles bishop e2 b6 castles bishop b7 bishop b2 positions or if you had said queen c2 bishop d6 bishop d3 i've struggled to find a way to spice it up i could have related but the line you're giving me is really really sharp and unbalanced therefore sorry there is very little sympathy to be found on this show because this position after a6 really is in it's a Maron's player's dream, e4, c5, and mess incoming. It's also objectively fine for black. So black has choices. So what else could you hope for? If you want to force the issue some more, then as mentioned, a6 is a move. Because after bishop b7, why does some extra options like e4 is a line? No, black is not in time with c5. So you have to go b4, knight a4, c5, e5, knight d5. It's a different position, but also not exactly boring. And a3 is very much a line. When black is a choice, most people play bishop d6 here. Yeah, this is somewhat more positional. b4 also exists, trying to spice it up. So a3, yeah, is a bit more positional. But yeah, castles a6, I'm not with you. I think these lines are very sharp and very interesting. And very playable. So, apologies, Mr. Turf and Fragment, I think. You have to dig deeper to get really bored in that weight variation it's not that positional looking anyway that was today's show thank you guys for watching check out chess24.com all kinds of funky things happening i think there'll be a lot of new video series as we get ready for the candidates the big big tournament that will determine the future challenger of Magnus Carlsen. Also, if you're watching this in time, on, <laughs> in time, on, I don't know, dates, February 24th, the Monday, 2020, there is the Chess24 anniversary, which I'm sure we will be celebrating with lots of live shows, lots of ventiplets, all that good stuff. So why don't you stop by, have a look around? Say hi or don't. Thanks for watching. This was whatever it's called, other names on the screen. See you next time.